Wisconsin has progressivism in our DNA. First kindergarten was in Wisconsin. First public sector unions were in Wisconsin. Our state has always looked forward. It's in our vision, it's in our motto. It was a trusted thing that like we're always gonna be progressive, but when you count too much on it just always being that way, it gives opportunity for other folks to come in. The election of Scott Walker started kind of the downfall into these really dark times that we have in the state. We're talking about the Tea Party takeover in 2010, Republican majorities and the state Senate, the state assembly, redistricting in 2011. And that set the maps, extremely gerrymandered maps for the next 10 years. Donald Trump wins Wisconsin. For the first time in my lifetime in 2016, Wisconsin voted for a Republican president. The other side has been plotting and planning for a long time, and they have a vision for the world that they're enacting right now. That doesn't mean that we need to get discouraged and not then try and fight back. We have an opportunity in Wisconsin to rebuild, to build a multiracial democracy. And it means unapologetically trusting the communities that are on the front lines. What are the issues that are animating our communities? Since 2018, MVP has been supporting grassroots organizations all across the state. And today we work with over 40 partners, organizations like Progress North and Block, Freedom Action Now, and Citizen Action of Wisconsin. Organizations committed to the communities they come from and that are regularly engaging with those communities. We provide coaching for new leaders, help build a pipeline of more organizers, canvassers, communicators to do the work of building power inside election cycles and outside of election cycles. Citizen Action is part of a national network of people's action, which is healthcare, climate justice, and democracy work. We do this wonderful thing called deep canvassing, which is where we actually talk to people. We have real conversations year round, not just transactional, hey, can you count on you to vote for this person? What would make you rethink your values? What would make you maybe vote for a different kind of candidate? So there's always something to talk about with voters. Citizen Action of Wisconsin came out of the traditional labor spaces, the fight for workers' rights. In 2011, Governor Walk started dismantling protections for working class people. And it wasn't done willy-nilly, it was a clear attempt to like divide and conquer. So it's really just about bringing people in. Our groups are trusted messengers. They're from the communities that they're organizing in, and that makes a difference. You can't be progressive without having a racial equity lens. And quite frankly, a lot of folks don't have that in Wisconsin. And so Block really prides ourselves in not only being able to do work and to connect with our community, but also push the progressive movement in Wisconsin forward. We started in November of 2017. In a lot of ways, it was a response to the 2016 election. And there's been so many times that the black community has showed up for democracy, showed up for this country in a way that hasn't showed up for us. We're out to build black political power. And we do that by letting folks know who their representatives are, connecting them to resources. A lot of things that we're hearing on doors are issues focusing on affordable housing and feeling safe in our own communities. We are currently sitting in the most incarcerated zip code in the world. That directly impacts a lot of people on our staff who haven't even had their voting rights restored yet. And so criminal justice remains at the top of mind as well. A young man named Brian Green allegedly committed suicide in jail. And the family, they're not getting any answers. And they also don't believe that he committed suicide. It's important for us to make sure that we're engaging and supporting community members, even on issues that are not directly related to politics. There's been a lot of folks that have decided to just step up and say, hey, I'm just a regular person out talking to regular people, figuring out how we can build community together. I have two kids, teenage level. I want them to be safe. I want them to have a bright future. I want them to have a fair shot at life. I have a two-year-old son, and he's a young African-American male, and so that's really my motivation. It really do make a difference when they see you doing work like this. We can't rely on parties or candidates to engage us. So if we want to get people to the polls, our model for us by us is incredibly important. One of the things that's really important to me is supporting a whole ecosystem in Wisconsin. And that means certainly showing up for organizations that are already in deep partnership with one another, but finding the gaps too. Progress North really stemmed from how we lacked progressive and like grassroots infrastructure in this part of the state. 
demographically, we have been particularly able to organize in the indigenous communities and reservations. Cheyenne, our lead organizer, has really worked to build relationships, to show up in community together, to support events that are happening, even if they're not our own, show that we can mutually support each other's work. I really think the rural urban divide is a myth. It gets lifted up as this big divide, but it realistically isn't. Like, the issues are the same. A lot of times I start out with hearing those personal stories. It helps people open up and picture the issues that people have in their own lives. We can kind of lift up for them then the candidates that do support the things that they care about. We have a goal of reaching about 20,000 folks on the doors, about 30,000 on the phones to reach people that really aren't being reached by other folks. It really is how we shift the dynamic long-term. Freedom Action Now is a Black and Southeast Asian organization. We think it's really important, especially in a state that's mostly white, that we find strong allies within the state to do our work. We have a common oppressive system to fight. We recognize that that can help us to build power one of the things that MVP has helped us with is scaling up our field operations. And so we do canvases in our tier one and tier two communities here in Madison. And then we support other organizations across the state to do canvassing as well. And so that's what we're supposed to be filming today. Um, and we're not doing that. So early last week, we got news that Freedom Inc., which is our sister organ, we share a building with them was featured in a Breitbart article, which is a far-right news publication, if you can call it that, around our abortion defense work. You know, some of our staff and board members were featured, as well as our location, everything put out there. Last time this happened was during the uprisings when we were leading 3,000 people in the streets. That's when we found out about the huge activity of, you know, white supremacist groups in the area. The volunteers and the folks that come and canvas with us and trust us with their safety, they don't deserve to go through something like a shooting or bomb or whatever else. As a queer black woman, I understand intimately the threat of violence, but it's still really hard to think about um, what we're organizing in, in this time. Organizations and their leaders are constantly in reaction mode with the help of MVP, a funder that is willing to invest in organizations above and beyond election cycles, they're able to then build, to organize through that fear in the name of the vision that they have, not just surviving, but thriving. We're gonna level up now to do more and to go further, because one thing we're gonna do is show for our community. We're just gonna come back bigger and better. MVP has been investing in organizations in Wisconsin since 2018, and we've seen some incredible wins over that time. In November 2018, we ousted Big Bad Scott Walker. Nobody thought we could do it. We delivered Wisconsin for Biden-Harris. Every single red county flip blue that we did work in. You know, democracy's a verb. I think about what happened in Wisconsin in 2016, and know that it could happen again. It could happen here again. It could happen anywhere. What we need from our donors is to invest in this organizing. We're not just going to drop in in August and then drop in again in November. If we have this funding, we can talk to people January through December. That work starts right now and it's going to happen every single day. That's how we're going to win. <laughs>